In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to enable your graphics processor when using the Adobe Premiere Pro Mercury Playback Engine. I want to let people know that the NVIDIA Shadow Play software has a bug in it right now, so you're not going to see my mouse cursor, but you should be able to learn quite a lot from this tutorial. I also want to let people know that I do have two GPUs being used right now. As you can tell, I'm making use of the Intel integrated graphics processor as well as my RTX 2070. If we go to the gigabyte statistics, you can see there's the RTX 2070 and we also have the integrated graphics processor from Intel. In order to make use of the integrated graphics processor from Intel, you have to enable that within the motherboard BIOS. You also have to install the driver for the integrated graphics processor. Once that's done, it should show up just like it is on my system. The reason why you might want to install the drivers and enable the integrated graphics processor from Intel is because the graphics processor does have the quick sync module or whatever you want to call it on the GPU. It can help for playback when using Premiere Pro, as well as programs like Final Cut Pro 10 and the EDIA software, it can also help for rendering if it's H.264. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. Right now I'm going to demonstrate how to enable your graphics processor when using Adobe Premiere Pro's Mercury Playback Engine. You simply go over to the menu bar of Adobe Premiere Pro where it says File. You're going to scroll down to where it says Project Setting and then scroll over and select General. Here we see that Mercury Playback Engine GPU acceleration using CUDA is already selected. That is exactly what I want. If you have an AMD graphics processor, you might have a little bit different options. I have the option to use OpenCL. I don't want to enable the OpenCL because it'll be trying to use my integrated graphics processor, the Intel integrated graphics processor. Right now, the way it's set up with using the CUDA acceleration, all the special effects like color correction, motion blur, and all that will be done by my RTX 2070 if I, have it, if I leave it with CUDA acceleration. The only thing the integrated graphics processor is going to do is help encode and decode H.264 video. You'll see what I mean in just a second. I can also opt to use Mercury Playback Engine software only. If you didn't have any type of graphics processor, this would be your only option. I like the way it's set up, so I'm going to hit cancel. And I hope that made sense to people. If not, it might after I do the demonstration. This is H.264 at 4K. I have full resolution enabled. I also have high quality playback enabled. So if I hit play, we'll look at the statistics. Let me bring up all the statistics really quick. As you can tell, the CPU is not being used hardly at all. It's only being used at like 10, 6%, even though we're starting to get more layers. The integrated graphics processor from Intel is starting to be used quite a lot. The GPU, the RTX 2070 GPU is being used as well because there is color correction filters applied. Plus it's doing the rasterizing of the picture in picture. The integrated graphics processor is only doing the encoding and decoding. So you can make use of your CPU, your integrated graphics processor, and your dedicated graphics card when using Premiere Pro. As you notice, the temperature never got super hot. The fan didn't wind out anywhere near 4,000 RPMs. I'll play this back really quick so you folks can see it again. You can look at the statistics. we see that the CPU temperature doesn't get above 50 degrees Celsius. Even though it's playing quite a few layers of 4K back in real time, H.264 is kind of hard to play back. But as I stated, the CPU is not really working all that hard in my system. It's the integrated graphics processor that's used more than anything else. And of course, my RTX 2070 is being used quite a lot. So I hope people can understand why it's useful to have the Intel Quick Sync. However, I'm going to select the red one video codec and you're going to see a big difference. When I hit play, watch what happens right off the bat. You're going to see the CPU temperature start to climb. It's already at 75 degrees Celsius. The fan is winding out. And that's because the Intel Quick Sync only helps when encoding and decoding H.264 video. 
It's not going to help play back the Blackmagic Design raw video files or any other type of video file that isn't H.264. Obviously, MPEG-4 and AVCHD make use of H.264, so it's a handy feature to have for a lot of people. It's not going to be useful for everybody, though. But I want people to see that the CPUs really got pegged. The integrated graphics processor isn't being used at all when playing back the Red One video codec. To make use of Intel's Quick Sync when rendering, you simply go to the Adobe Premiere Pro menu bar, you go to File, you go to Export, and select Media. In the Video tab, you'll scroll down till you see Hardware Encoding. This will make use of Intel's Quick Sync. If you notice, you only have one parameter that you can change. If you opt to use CPU encoding, software encoding means you're using the CPU, now you have two parameters you can change. I want to let people know using the hardware encoding does produce a pretty good image. You just don't have quite as much control as if you used the CPU. But that's really all there is to it. I want to end this video by stating there's no way in Adobe Premiere Pro's interface to disable or enable the integrated graphics processor. As I stated, that has to be done in the motherboard BIOS.